Hello everyone, I wanted to make a little quickie Q&A today and we're doing it in the car. I'm just thinking actually, if I open the roof, is that better lighting? Does that make any difference at all to you? Let me just show you my view. So this is the view out the front. And then as you can see, it's a pretty grey, rainy day. But I feel like that makes it extra cosy. I've just been to like a little local like farm shop thing to get some bits and I picked this up squeeze your peach nothing artificial real peach like fizzy peach drink so I thought we would give this a go does anyone else gotta do that before you open a can let's give this a go and then we'll crack on with the cues that's nice <laughs> it took me a while to decide if that was nice or not yeah that's nice I like it right you ask some questions oh that's my windscreen wipers. Um, you asked some questions on Instagram ages ago, but I have been ill. So for two weeks, I didn't make any videos, but we are here now. I saved them all. This was the 20th of June. You sent me them all. Um, I screen grabbed them all. And we'll just get cracker lacking and have like a little chatty catch up. I'm not answering these in any order. Some of them are like light questions. Some of them are a bit deeper. Let's just go. Do you like Taylor Swift? Yes. I like her even more after the Eras tour. I feel like that's been amazing promotion for her because I've seen it all over TikTok. The bracelets, the style, the excitement of other people. I've like totally got caught up in all of that. How do you tell the difference between your cats? I just can tell the difference. Rocket is a big beefy boy. Um, Milky is more grey and Orbit has a black back. Um, do you still have your office? Yes and also no. Um, I've actually handed my notice in on the office so in a short while my tenancy will be up and I won't have that office anymore. I kept it on for so much longer than I needed to. If you're new around here I rented an office a few years ago because I thought oh yeah I'm gonna be like a girl boss and I'm gonna have this office I'm gonna really grow my business. I'm gonna turn this off and talk about this. Um, grow my business and it's going to be amazing so I rented this office space which was really really lovely like I am sad because it's a really nice space um and I would go there and I also had some team members that I employed directly so that's different from like my management agency which is YMU and like PR and stuff because they're um, they don't work directly for me we work together um so they work for their companies and like I pay for their services or they take a commission from my work that's how that works um but I hired some staff and do you know what I'll talk about this at length another time basically I'm just not a very good boss and also not very good at growing a business basically the problem was in a it's hard to say this in a nutshell I don't think I'm a very good boss like I find it very difficult to manage people and be in charge and like I'm a people pleaser and I want to please people all the time and if you're the manager you can't always be a people pleaser so there was that element of it also I think that the working environment I can offer someone is pretty <laughs> limited like there's a difference between working for me in my small town up here in Northampton and working on like quite specific content and then also like working in a big busy London office or a big city um, in like a big like a big office environment like that's really fun for people and I can't offer that like I'm just not that fun <laughs> so um, I had two members of staff Maisie left because basically she found a better job <laughs> don't blame her like her job sounded really cool that she went to all of this was all by the way on like very good terms um well, it was on my end <laughs> it was maybe she was just like I hate this I'm off uh but I don't think so um so she has gone basically got a better job and then um the person that we hired was to be her assistant so it's kind of hard for her because she didn't have anyone to assist and I didn't need her at that point to assist me and um it wasn't the right jump for her to like move into that role um so um that didn't carry on either and then I was like well do I need the office um I did think to myself maybe I'll hire um more people in the future um but I just didn't I just kind of lost confidence in like the boss babe life I just thought maybe I'm not a boss babe maybe I'm not a girl boss I hate those phrases by the way um 
so I just kind of like went back to being like a little one man band and I didn't really need the office space because I, I don't mind working from home because it's my home and it was like a nice place to work so I kept the space on thinking maybe I'll go maybe I'll go maybe I'll go and I went a few times but I just wasn't making the most of it for the money I was paying so I handed my notice in um I've taken most of my furniture out now there's a few more bits to go and collect um but yeah I would like to talk more about that in the future if you're interested in that kind of thing because I think that there's this huge drive all the time to like grow and expand and like this whole like boss I don't know what it's called like boss babe culture like I'm not against it obviously because who doesn't want to grow and expand but sometimes think it's okay just to say I'm actually okay where I am like this is my capacity at the moment this works for me um that's not to say I'm not looking to expand in the future I've got actually a few ideas and some things that we're going to be doing but differently that I think will kind of be better for everybody and I won't feel so guilty that I'm not providing a really exciting brilliant work environment honestly imagine sitting in a room with me all day <laughs> like I wouldn't want to sit in a room with me all day or working from home and just having like chit chat with me like don't have the office bants just just don't have enough um so yeah don't have well I do have the office but I won't have it for much longer how is the wedding dress search going it's not I haven't found a dress I'm now thinking maybe I want a destination wedding so I want something like loosey-goosey floaty fine wedding dress boutiques a very intense environment and I and I feel like I don't like that feeling when you're trying on a dress that doesn't fit you but they just put like clamps or like extra bits or like pad padded bits or like stuff at the back like that doesn't make me feel nice about myself so if anyone knows a wedding dress shop that has a variety of sizes I understand they can't have all the sizes in but I don't know so no it's not going very well ah. favorite Harry Potter character and why uh Luna Lovegood I just love the cut of her jib I think that she's really special I also love her name um it was one of my baby names actually um but I just love everything about her this is a deep one would you have forgiven your dad if he didn't say sorry so <clears throat> I think this is something I talked a lot about on TikTok which was um I had a really turbulent childhood where someone came into my life and was really horribly terribly abusive and it took my dad a really long time to remove me from that situation or to remove them from our lives and for a long time I felt really angry at him because I didn't believe him when he said he didn't know it was happening but as I've gotten older I've realized I'm not cross that he didn't know it was happening I'm I was cross I was angry that he didn't notice the signs that it was happening that he wasn't looking hard enough because I equated that to not looking after me hard enough not loving me hard enough not loving me and my dad since has apologized and I have made the choice to accept that apology and to try and move on and have like a good relationship with him and do nice things together and like have a good family would I have forgiven him if he hadn't have said sorry that's such a good question I think I would have made the choice to have a happy family and to do that I would have had to have forgiven him but he gave me the gift of an apology which made it so much easier so for that I've got a lot of respect and admiration for him in that sense because that is it's hard to say sorry for things it's hard to recognize failure and it's hard it's, it's hard so um I think I would have but I think it would have been a potentially longer journey to get to that point do you miss any of the old slash original youtube days this is something that i talk about quite a lot with my friend marie in america because she's been there since the beginning she knows those golden olden days um a little bit yes but mostly no i think oh, can you hear the rain that's so soothing i think it looked a lot more glamorous than it was there were definitely really exciting parts of it there was like this kind of like heady optimism this excitement this like wow I can't believe this is happening it was all very wow and it was all very like where will this go it felt like a really big glittery adventure in one sense and there was you know like going to VidCon and 
flying like first class with all your friends and going to a convention and like having the coolest funnest week and um like building these online communities and always having people to talk to and it being so nice and then I don't know I think behind the scenes it wasn't as amazing as it looked now that I look back on it there were a lot of things that now as the with the confidence I have in myself now that I wouldn't have put up with I would have said like hang on a minute this is not okay this is like this is not kind or this is not acceptable behavior I would have like I don't know can't really describe it it's really hard to describe without giving examples but to give examples you're kind of involving lots of other people which I don't want to do because I only want to make this about my story and my opinion um because I don't want to put words or feelings in someone else's mouth um or in other people's mouths but yeah I I think that some people might look back on it and think it was amazing and they really really loved it I definitely loved a lot of elements of it um but now I feel happier with like the YouTube vibe as it is I feel like I still have that really lovely online community that I can talk to and engage with and grow with but I feel like the people around me and the experiences that I'm having are now a lot more genuine and are coming from a really like a healthier place like as much as it's amazing to go to conventions and have people like screaming and screaming like that's a real like it's an ego boost of course because you're like wow people are screaming for me but then when you dive into that you think what have I actually provided for that like I don't feel like this is I don't feel worthy of this I don't feel like I deserve this and then you start to feel uncomfortable then you start to think like oh I, this is wrong like I, sh I need to tell you to like stop being excited for me like be excited for everyone else and I, I just started to not feel okay about it and then there were people that I could see that were really really loving it and like hyping it up almost and I was thinking oh I, I don't know I felt very conflicted Whereas now I feel like the interactions I have with people are a lot more like on my level. They're a lot more chilled. They're a lot more like just person to person. Um, there are still obviously like loads of amazing things about being a YouTube. Like this is my life. I can support my whole life on doing something I really love. And that's amazing. And I have these lovely connections with people. But yeah, I miss the glitz and excitement of the early days but I'm not sure that I miss much else I miss being younger and less tired that's for sure um I definitely had more energy then and I miss that um but no I would hope that you as the audience prefer it now not that I don't want you to have enjoyed that time I think what I'm saying is I hope that you feel comfortable and happy now being in this community um if there's anything i can do to make you more comfortable and happy and if there's anything i do to improve this space let me know because that's what i love doing all right let's find like an easier questione um will you write any more books yes um, i'll leave that there um do the girls know about your difficult childhood and if not will you tell them in the future I didn't really go for an easier one there um, Darcy does know about the difficult childhood obviously she doesn't know all the details um, but she knows as much as like I guess the internet knows um, and as she gets older I'll tell her more um, but obviously she's kind of much much closer to all of that because she's closer to all the people in our family that know about it and she is being parented by the grown-up child of trauma and abuse so she is having a really unique experience around my difficult childhood so yeah she knows about it Pearl obviously doesn't Pearl knows that like granny in heaven died and then that someone came along that wasn't very nice to mummy but she doesn't really know much more than that because she's five um, but I will tell her something I've learned over the years about child abuse uh, or any abuse really is that I say it's not my dirt you know people say 
don't don't air your dirty laundry in public i think it's not my dirt it's not my dirty laundry so i can air this as much as i like and it's actually very healing to air that and get it get it out there and to talk about it in like a normal sense so at home we do talk about it like very casually and it's not like this big like dirty family secret that we can never talk about um we just talk about it quite openly and sometimes they ask questions and sometimes they ask questions when i'm like not at all prepared for them to ask these questions like we can be driving and they'll just say something that they don't realize is like really cutting and i just have to like take a deep breath and like answer that as appropriately as possible um but yes the answer to your question is yes they do know to an extent and yes i will tell them more as they get older i'm getting a lot of questions about like custody and co-parenting it's not really something that i'm going to talk about too much at the moment um not because i don't have anything to say so much to say uh but darcy watches these videos or she will watch them she's got access to youtube so i feel like that's more her story than mine so for now um i'm kind of like sidestepping those questions Will you be doing another plus size fashion video? Love the last one. I can do if you like, but what sort of plus size fashion video would you like? Do you want like a try on? Do you want an outfit diary? I'm just conscious that like people don't love hauls and I also don't buy like loads and loads and loads of stuff all at once anymore. Um, but what would you like? You tell me what you want for plus size fashion and I will give it to you, baby. This is a good one. How do you monitor Darcy's social media and chat with friends without feeling intrusive? um controversial parenting here i am intrusive i am intrusive with her phone with her social media i look through absolutely everything we have a rule that i can pick up her phone whenever i like and have a look through it so she can't you know delete things or hide things if she was going to i don't think she does but she knows that any moment mum can go through that phone and it's not because i don't want to give her privacy it's because this is a scary big world like i work in social media i know social media and i know the power of it and i also know the danger of it um not just social media digital socializing so whatsapp with her friends or you know text messages and things like that um so how do i monitor it i monitor it extremely heavily and if she said something that i think is really inappropriate or if someone else has said something inappropriate I will talk about it um at the moment we haven't had any like huge big things to worry about but there's been a couple of times where i've been like oh darcy i don't know if you know but your tone in that didn't sound quite right because she's learning she's learning online communication um and online communication is hard for adults sometimes i read a text and think i can't work out the tone in that or maybe i've sounded a bit brash in that or maybe i've sounded like too loving in that or you know she's navigating all of that as well so are all of her friends so yeah i'm pretty i am intrusive and i tell her about it i never do it sneakily i always do it in front of her and just say it's because i love you um and also i make sure to if there is something that i think mm, we need to chat about it's not a telling off it's not i don't shame her for it we like talk about the situation in terms of social media um I'm pretty strict on what social media she has so she does not have tiktok um although i do let her go on my tiktok what i do is i heart the videos that i like and i save the videos i think she'll like so and the ones i think are okay for her to watch so she can go on my phone and we go into the saved section and she can just like scroll through and have that experience of tiktok uh without having like the opportunity to stumble across something that i don't think is right for her she doesn't have TikTok. She does have um, Instagram, her own private Instagram. Um, and it's also linked up to me. So I can just flick onto that whenever I like from my phone. Um, I don't allow group chats on WhatsApp. I just think that, that they're dicey. Group chats are hard enough as it is, especially when you're a teenager. The ones that I've allowed her in are ones that I will go in and look at. And usually um, they're very small. So like maybe two or three girls that she's friends with or her dance um her dance team her competition team where they like talk about dates for things and logistics um what else do we do on the phone we've got obviously all like the child protection things and um like times like screen time stuff uh but yeah in terms of like social media and chat with friends i just am intrusive and i will continue to be intrusive uh until i think that she's able to be safe on there 
I have been talking so long and there's so many good questions so maybe we'll have to do a part two in a couple of weeks but um, I'll end on this one you're always open uh, openly honest if we skip ads do creators still get paid always curious thank you for that question um, do you know I don't actually know the answer to that I think it's probably more financially beneficial if you watch the ad but please don't watch the ad just because you think I will get paid I get paid enough don't you worry about me you just make sure you're having like the best viewing experience on here I skip ads I skip ads on my friends videos when I'm watching their videos I'll sometimes I'll well I'll always press the after five seconds like skip ad don't worry about it like you it's not your job to worry about am I making enough revenue off the videos? It's just your job to be a viewer and just to like enjoy your internet experience. So uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I don't know. I actually don't know if you get more money if someone watches the whole video or if they press the skip button. Um, I couldn't tell you. I think you probably, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but honestly, don't worry about it. Just, just, you know what would be really helpful? Give the video a thumbs up and a little comment if you want. Uh, but mostly just watch it and enjoy it and have a nice life. <laughs> that's the end of the video. Have a nice life, that's the end of the video. Also filming um, something this week that will go up on Sunday, which I think you will like. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed just a little cosy, rainy, chit-chatty video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got questions for a further Q&A, leave them below. All right, lots of love.